Good morning, everybody. Annie went to get a sweater, I think. Yes. You're looking very chipper. I'm like, I'm freezing. <laughs> it is a little cold. It's here cold. Today. And the other side.
three circles. Two circles. and pink circles. and reverse.
Okay, you can put away your sticks. Jumping around the room. Okay, so today we're going to move into talking about the three dimensions of movement. Front to back, which is the B dimension, side to side, which is the shoe dimension, and level, which is the ping dimension. So the X, Y, and Z axes. And we're just going to deal with one axis today. It's not even, it's maybe not the most important one, but actually it's really important, right? So, um, yes, reveal the drawing here. So we've gone from kind of a two-dimensional circle with a central pole and a central point to a three-dimensional circle. And what this circle is describing on the Earth side is the equator. On the human body, that's called the dimai. The dimai, which means literally the, the belt meridian or the belt orbit. Let's come up a little closer here. Not that you really need it, but. Okay, so this, this is an orbit that, that goes around the body. It's the only horizontal energy channel in the whole body. Most of the energy channels run longitudinally, so uh, vertically, straight up and down through the body. Well, not straight up and down. They, they go in all kinds of wiggly patterns, but they go through the body. But there is one uh, channel that goes horizontal, and that's the belt channel. And it's called belt channel because it's right where your belt is. But it's important to understand it's not like a little line, like on the drawing here. This is just an illustration to give you the idea. So it's kind of an idealized illustration. It's a very wide belt. If you've ever worn a tuxedo, if you've never worn a tuxedo, go out and rent one this afternoon and make sure you get one with a cummerbund. All right? A cummerbund is a really wide belt. Right? That, that's this wide through the body. And it is that wide. Actually, it's as wide as from your um, thoracic uh, uh, diaphragm down to your pelvic diaphragm. But it concentrates or focuses right around the center where your Dan Chen is. And this is what allows you to move. In China, it's called the Ring of Power. And this was long before Tolkien. All right? So this is, this is what gives you power when you're turning like this. So let me put my tape on here and you'll see what I mean. Because tape explains tape. everything. Yeah. Tape is the thing. Chen in the in the middle here. Actually, I am gonna I am gonna put it all the way around the body with a little help from Annie. Oh, 
Okay, and then in the middle, in this, and this is why I want to put it all the way around the body. Right. In the middle of the back, Okay, so uh, this is going to stand in for, for the dye mine, but remember it's wider than this. And actually the acupuncture point in the front is called the chi hai, which means the ocean of chi. You can think of that as the front door to the dan chen, because the dan chen is behind that. The dan chen is in the center of the body. And then the back door back here is called the Ming Mun, the gate of life. And that controls the water balance in the body, which is why it's called the gate of life, all right? So this is a really important energy channel and it allows you to turn with some power. Okay, so on the earth itself, let's look at this, on the earth itself, the equator in physics is called the moment of inertial mass. Meaning, if you were going to uh, measure the mass of the Earth, you would do it from the equator, mm -hmm. not from some other point. Because that is the moment, the place, the instant of greatest inertial mass. Inertia is what? Well, we think of inertia as not being able to move, but something that's moving can also have inertia. So it simply means the, the internal energy or the internal power. So it is, this is the place of greatest power. The earth is spinning at all times. And so it has an, an inertia and it has an inertial mass. And the place where the inertial mass is greatest is at the equator. That's also true for a human being. And you can say, well, well, I'm not rotating all the time. Well, if you study Tai Chi and Qigong, you start to rotate all the time. It doesn't have to be, you know, for a human being, a physical motion all the time. It can be moving like this, and you see nothing on the outside. Grandmaster Feng was like that all the time. He would just stand there, and he would just look like a regular person. But if you put your hands on him, you realize, Jesus, this guy's spinning. He'd spin off. <laughs> you, would, you would spin off. At any moment, he could, it's like he could throw a clutch, all right? And he could engage that clutch, and just boom, immediately, the energy would come out from, the, this is like a flywheel. Right? Flywheels are coming back into vogue because they can be used to store energy. So they, they are starting to develop really high-tech, large flywheels as a way to store energy. So they're not storing in batteries, they're storing in flywheels. This is your flywheel. This is your moment of greatest inertial mass. So don't think of <laughs> a big belly is necessarily a bad thing. All right? It just depends on whether it's been activated or not. So the rest of the uh, session here, we're going to do some exercises for the Dan Tian specifically. All right? Okay. Any questions? All right. Okay, so we had our sticks out uh, a little while ago, and I I'm just going to, I'll just grab my little stick here. All right. The first exercise for something like this, if you're using a stick, is just to do the ping exercise. And you're going around and around the waist, all right, all 360 degrees. Right? 
Now, it's important to use your mind, to use your senses, and feel. It's like, uh, imagine a ball going around and around and around, all 360 degrees of the body. And reverse. Okay. We'll do a bunch of other exercises for this, but I want to talk a little bit about this exercise. What you're trying to do is wake up certain capabilities in the body. It's not like Tai Chi or this stick or any of this is going to give you anything you don't have. You've already got it. It's just a matter of becoming aware of it. So we could all have a really good golf swing, providing we practiced and learn what a golf swing was and how to use your body to accomplish it. So it's kind of the same kind of thing. You kind of wake up to that. This is a very simple exercise and you can think of it as really as a health exercise, which it is. Right? And just do these exercises. Right? Watch my hands. You could do it like this. And that, if you've got your mind on your Dan Chen, or on your uh, Dan Mai rather, uh, you, you will get an effect from that. You will, you will begin to change. But watch, watch my right hand, this hand here. So what I'm doing is spinning the stick. As I go around my belly, I spin the, spin the stick, and then as it goes across my back, I spin with the other hand, the left hand, the right hand, the left hand, the right hand. So I'm spinning the stick in the same motion that I'm spinning my body. So why would you want to do that? Well, you could do it for two reasons. You could do it for the sake of Qigong, uh, as a health art. So it's, it's just a matter of kind of doubling up on the exercise that you're doing. Or, because this exercise actually comes out of Tai Chi, you could do it for the sake of Tai Chi. When you're doing it for the sake of Tai Chi, it's about the interaction between the inner body and the outer world mediated in this case by the hands right. could be mediated by the elbows right. or reverse it's not the shoulder that throws the elbow. It's the daimai that throws the elbow. So the point of throwing an elbow is to clock somebody a little bit, right? Boom. The force in your elbow is the mass of, of the elbow right, times its acceleration. If you're just using your arm, how much mass do you think is there? 
versus your whole body. It feels like you're also using the energy of the earth. Well, exactly. And why why do you feel like you're using the energy of the earth? What is it about the motion itself that engages the energy of the earth? It's your footwork. Right? One, two, three, four. Engage your waist. Now take that motion and express it through your elbow. That's kind of a more martial version of what we do, which is a, a little a little softer, a little more health oriented, but it's exactly the same idea. It's a whip. Huh? Only instead of the whip, it's the elbow. Okay, but to get back, all right, to the hand on the stick. Can you see I'm shifting my weight? Turning the waist. And then expressing that in the hands. So this motion inside, turn, turn. I'm doing the same motion with my hand as part of my body movement. From the martial point of view, that's practice for Shana, for joint locking. So Annie and I have done this demonstration before, and I hope she doesn't hurt me, but um, let me lower the camera just a little bit up close to the camera. When you joint lock someone, all right, you don't do it with your arm. You do it with your daimai. Right? So I'm going to start with my body weight toward Annie, and I'm going to move my body weight away, and then I'm going to turn my waist. So that this is exactly what the exercise we just did. And then remember, I'm turning, turning my hand. So it's like, it's like a little extra 10% right on top of the body motion. And sure, her hand is just going to get caught in this mechanism. Do you feel any tension in my arm? So you don't have to tense all your muscles up and try to force something into someone, you just let them sort of fall into the mechanism, you might say. Quaw. Watch the red claw. Now, for the final piece de resistance, right? I'm going to manipulate her hand and the acupuncture points in her hand. So come close to the, right? What I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to try to turn a hand so you can see. I'm going to press down into her knuckles here. All right. Only it's going to be horizontal. So I, I'm going to do this a little bit, but not real hard. And that way you can catch the wrist. 
this is what a joint lock is. You're, you're lining the bones up in such a way that um, someone can't move out of it. That's why it's a lock. All right? So you can say you, you get it and then you lock it. And then you can go and lock the elbow. See, if I, do, if I use any energy at all, she hits me, so I can't do that. All right? But you go wrist, elbow, shoulder, and then down to the down chin, and then you put a reverse curve on it. No, you don't. <laughs> She's going to hit me. Oh, I'm hardly even doing it. All right. Okay, so the daimai is very active in a movement like that. You could see it's about this. And someone gets caught in that. That's a lot of weight, almost 240 pounds, all right? Boom. However, most of the time, the movement of the daimai is much more subtle. And you have to have a well-trained eye to see it. So the very first move in the form, we'll do the, I'm going to do the very first stuff you can practice with me, all right? And it apparently has no daimai movement at all. But watch your daimai as you do this, and then tell me whether there's no movement. And remember, when you do this, you always are shifting your weight from foot to foot. It's never 50-50. Up on the right, down on the left. 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 Now, that, that choice is arbitrary. You could do it just the opposite. You could do up on the left and down on the right. But we do it that way just so everybody moves in the same position. There is, in fact, a very subtle use of the daimai in every one of those motions. All right? Up on the right. Down on the left. Up on the right. Down on the left. Turn to the right. Turn to the left. Turn to the right, turn to the left. One more. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. It's very subtle, but it's in there, and without that, you'd be you'd be like a stick. You'd be stiff. Well, it seems to me that anytime you shift your weight, that energy has to go through something. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's probably the it includes the waist. Exactly, uh, and it's exactly right. In Tai Chi, you never, ever stand fifty-fifty. It's always one side or the other. It may not be a hundred percent. It may be 60-40. It may be 45-55, all right? It may be 49-51, but there's always a shifting weight back and forth, every exercise, every movement. And of course, when you do that, your waist naturally is going to begin to turn. You're gonna to begin to engage the waist. The only difference is, in this case, you become aware of it and you learn to use it. Oh, okay, my waist is not just a nothing. It's a something, and I'm going to use it. Let's do, um, let's do um, the grindstone. Now, the grindstone is, is almost purely ping. Now, instead of being very subtle, it's going to be, wow, it's going to be 95% of everything that you're doing, all right? But just as with the stick, it's a great exercise for this. Of 
across the belly, in the left side, across the spine and back, out the right side, across the belly. Weight shift, waist turn. could try to do that without shifting your weight. So here's a, here's a lesson in watching Tai Chi players. You watch people do Tai Chi and you will see this, because right? there are pieces of the form itself which are actually uh, just like this, right? Watch this. <laughs> it actually hurts to do it that way, right? Uh, it's, um, uh, it's better than nothing, right? But this exercise is not this exercise. To engage the ground, engage your feet. That's really the exercise. And then building up out of that foundation comes the, comes the movement with the waist. And out of the movement of the waist comes the movement of the upper body, of the arms itself. So I should say uh, a couple other things, and then we'll do a few more exercises before we quit. Um, the waist is not the hips. The hips, the waist rests on the hips, right? but they can move independently of each other. For most people, when they start, and you really need to do push hands to feel this, the, the uh, hips and the waist are locked together. This is just a habit. It's a habit of non-motion, right? And so if, they want, if you want to move your waist, you end up having to move your hips too. But in fact, they, they can be separated and you can, you can learn, you can learn to use your waist and your daimai without necessarily engaging your hips. It takes a little time, but it, it can happen. Uh, the second thing is, and, and this is kind of why this works, the, the daimai is an energetic function. If they dissected you, they would not find a daimai inside here any more than if you dissected the earth, you'd find an equator. Nevertheless, there really is a moment of greatest inertial mass going around the Earth at the place the equator is. The point is, the equator is not that line on a map. It's a function. And it's the same, the same with the daimon. And your physical body can only go so far. So if I'm rotating my, around my daimon like this, how far can my physical body turn? 
Well, not that far. I mean, it kind of, it can kind of turn, but you know, it gets to a place where it can't turn anymore. So it can move six or eight inches, and then it's kind of done. But in the martial arts, you're going to need to move a lot farther than six to eight inches. Fortunately, your daimai is not restricted in its motion to the motion of the body. The daimai can move much farther than eight inches. Practically speaking, one of the ways to move the daimai, I'm moving my daimai around right like it, and then it goes across my back and it comes out here again. But in most motion, you don't necessarily go all 360 degrees. What you do is you go around the body to, you go around the body until it gets to this hip. Because that allows you to take it down to the ground. All right? And you can feel it. You can feel it. Oh, go, 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 go. Yes. Boom. Right there. That's sturdy. Now I've got a leg underneath me. And I, I could move in, 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 in any direction from that leg on the ground. If I only go part way like this, now it's not really sunk into the ground right now. It needs to go around all the way to this hip on this side. So when you practice the circles, doesn't matter what exercise you're doing, when you're practicing, a good way to practice is with consciousness of, of the hips, which are back in here, all right? And so as I'm going around, all right, first to this hip, uh, and a, a, a very simple way to think about it is you're sitting down on a bar stool. You know, it's a tall stool about this, about this high. And you come around and you just sit. And then you go around to this side and you sit. Right? Sit. 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 And where you feel it is right in here, all right? Right on the bottom crease of your butt. All right? And if you feel underneath there, you'll feel the bones. That's what you're sitting on. Sit. Sit. You practice that when you're doing a circles like you guys are doing. Keep doing it, right? When you get to the form, that's what you do too. Now, in order to do that, you have to have your pelvis open, which means you need to be in a horse stance. If your pelvis is closed, how are you going to sit down on those bones? Because the bones are tucked in and pulled up. How are you going to sit? Well, you can't. You have to open your pelvis and then uh, relax onto your butt bones or your sit bones, right? Left, right, left, right, left, Right. right, and what powers all that is your dynamite. Right, or all the way. Can you see how I sit, 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 sit? sit. If you really want to get this, that's what you've got to do. All right? And at first, it may be a little, feel a little, it may feel great, or it may feel a little strange. But after a few sessions, it'll, it'll feel normal. And, uh, and then it becomes a way of moving. Sit, 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 sit. And when you bring it into the, into the form, right, I'm going to do... This is the last point I want to make. I'm going to do some shoe circles, side to side circles. All right? Those are, those are not ping circles, those are shoe circles. So they are not being run primarily by the daimai. Nevertheless, I want you to watch the daimai. Wasn't the daimai involved? Yes. The truth is, 
All three dimensions of movement are involved with every movement. It's not a matter of black or white, one or the other. It's always all three. It's just the proportions that change. So a movement like this, wow, that's probably, you know, 90% ping and 5% uh, shoe and 5% lead. But a movement like this is probably, you know, 80% shoe, uh, maybe 15% ping and 5% lead. Or you may have different, uh, different things. Yeah, Jack. Um, I have a well question observation. I notice when I'm when we're doing the grindstone that if I go in this direction, I'm also feeling energy going in the opposite direction, and it's 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 smaller a smaller amount of force it seems, and it's it's not contradictory; it's complementary. But I'm feeling it going in the opposite direction at the same time. That's that's a, an observ. First of all, that's it's the hula hoops. <laughs> right, it's a hula hoop. <laughs> it is a little. Uh, first of all, what what Jack is doing is observing himself as he's moving, and that is what you've got to do if you want to truly make this you your own. You just oh yeah yeah. If you want to sing the blues, right? You 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 have to pay attention to what's going on, and then you will notice things like that, and you may not have an answer to that kind of question that you posed for yourself, but nevertheless, the question will be there, and as time goes on, you will begin to uh, be able to fill some of the gaps in. So you know, a motion like that has a counter motion inside because for every action there must be an equal and opposite reaction so what is that reaction well you can think of that motion as a yang motion you are really you know putting some some energy out there well where's the yin the yin must be going in the opposite direction and instead of going out it's coming in so I'm doing this, but in fact, there's another alternative motion. As, as this hand comes around, this one goes that way. So we've got a motion. Here, try this one. We'll finish, we'll finish with this one. It's called a hidden hand punch. All right? Uses exactly that motion. All right? Left foot forward, right hand up, and hidden hand punch. Spin around, hidden hand punch, spin around, hidden hand punch, spin around. Watch the white dot. So there's a, a perfect example of actually using both the motion and the counter motion in, in one motion there, right? So uh, excellent observation, Jack. Uh, any final questions? Okay, if you're going to stay for beginning Tai Chi or advanced Tai Chi, pay attention to this today just like Jack was doing. Just pay attention, all right? Pay attention to all the places that you're gonna find some ping energy, all right? Watch. It's, it's everywhere. Okay, guys, if you're going to stay for beginning Tai Chi, give me 15 minutes. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Ciao.